Hello friends, this is Wendy with Love and Stampin' and today I am going to use the Bag of Bones bundle from Stampin' Up. This is a brand new bundle coming out September 6th. Word on the street is that it's already on back order. So, yep. <laughs> of course I ended up choosing a stamp set that was on back order. That was a total accident. Okay, so I've got my black cardstock here and I'm just using my little rabbit cottontail rabbit hole designs duster. <laughs> That's not what it's called at all. Cottontail embossing powder tool, maybe? Anyways, it's my favorite. And um, so I'm going to stamp all of these in Versamark ink on my basic black. And then I'm gonna cover them in white embossing powder. And I actually use Hero Arts uh, white embossing powder, detail white embossing powder. And so I'm gonna do that and heat set it and die cut these little fellers out and then we're going to get busy making the rest of the card. So I completely 100% bought this stamp set for the little dog and cat that were bones. I thought they were just so stinking cute. I could not, I just could not. I thought they were adorable. I was gonna stamp this twice and then I was afraid that I had moved my paper and so I wimped out which ended up being totally fine because everything embossed fantastic anyway so it wasn't a big deal so I'm just gonna cover this with white embossing powder as I said earlier and then I'm gonna use my heat tool to heat set all of these and then when I die cut them they'll be ready for the card one of the tips um, I want to give you is considering your white embossing powder. So I use Hero Arts Detail White Embossing Powder because I find that it is the whitest of white and it just ends up being my favorite. So when you're choosing white embossing powder, some of them will have kind of a yellowy tone and that annoys me. If that doesn't bother you, no problem, but it bothers me. Okay, so to the ink blending. You can see here, I am not doing the smoothest job with my ink blending. I'm using Starry Sky, Orchid Oasis, and Melon Mambo. I am covering the background with Melon Mambo and then going back over it with Starry Sky. And it doesn't matter to me that it's kind of muddled. The reason for that is we're gonna do all kinds of stuff to this background, so it's going to be muddled anyway. For the grass, I'm using Garden Green and Granny Apple Green. And I actually end up kind of ink blending into the green with the pink and the starry sky. And it kind of, you can see there, has a little tiny tinge of brown. When you mix complementary colors on the color wheel, it's gonna turn brown. And it did in this case, and that was perfectly fine because this is supposed to be like a dark night starry sky kind of a scene and kind of a little bit spooky wooky so I was totally fine with it kind of being muddled colors right in there for this little I don't know what this thing is coffin or it's not a coffin it's not a headstone I've seen them in cemeteries but I don't know what they're called so I'm ink blending it with Pebbled Path. Why wouldn't I just cut it out in Pebbled Path cardstock? Because I'm on a kick of using white cardstock for most everything and just ink blending it. I actually think it provides a little bit more interest and texture to the project because you get an inconsistency in the color. And if I'm being totally honest, I really like that inconsistency in the color. Here I'm using some of my Fine Tech watercolors to add some shimmery white splats to the background of the card and then I am going to ink blend these little tiny boots for my skeleton because my skeleton is a cowboy. Why wouldn't he be a cowboy? Of course he would be a cowboy. So who doesn't love a cowboy? Maybe we'll talk more about that in a moment. So here of course, partly through my ink blending, I'm like, oh, dummy, you own an Alta New sticky mat. And this thing is literally one of the best creations ever. It's just a big old piece of photopolymer, basically. And I put it down, put my 
pieces on top of it. And as you can see, I can ink blend right on top of it without holding anything down. The only thing I will say is it does stain a little bit. Now that doesn't bother me personally, but if that's something that would bother you, I just want you to be aware of it. You can purchase these um, sticky mats individually. You don't have to purchase the whole stamp wheel that's sold. You can just get the sticky mat and I will link to that. While we're talking about linking to things, um, <laughs> I just want to tell you that I am horrible about it. So I say to you guys in videos, I'll link to that. I'll link to that. I'll link to that. And then I forget half the things I'm supposed to link to. So, um, I, I'm, I'm going to apologize to you for that up front. I'm going to try to be better about it. I'm going to make an, a, a point to write notes when I say that I'm going to link to something as I'm recording a video for you. I'm going to, to write that thing down so that I can remember, oh yeah, you said that in the video. Okay, so let's talk about my precision glue press really quick that you see me using here. You can get this from My Sweet Petunia. I do have a link for that in the video, below the video. It's $34.99 for a full bottle of glue, the press, the stand that the press sits in, and an empty bottle. Um, I, for a long time, had no issues with clogging with this glue press at all. And I still really don't have any major issue with clogging, but I do want to be totally transparent that my glue bottle will clog every once in a while. And I think it is purely because my office is not temperature controlled when I'm not in it. So it gets really hot and really cool in here. And I think that that is having some effect because when I was using it like every day, I did not have any clogging issues. But if I go a few days and it sits in my hot office, um, and mind you, I live in California, it's very dry, and sometimes it can be 100 degrees here, and so I think that that has been some of the issue. Okay, back to the card. We are just gluing all the parts and pieces down now. I'm adding the puppy dog who's walking that fence line. I decorated up my little cowboy skeleton. I added the kitty cat. And you can see how really cool this entire scene is just coming together. Now, I you may have noticed I've been making a lot of scene cards. It is my passion. It is the thing I love doing the most. And uh, you'll probably continue to see that for me. And I just really enjoy it. I like cutting the parts and pieces. I like putting together a scene. And it makes me really happy. So you know, do what makes you happy, do what you love. And we're not even going to end up using this heart. It was a good idea in theory. So here's all the parts and pieces, but then we have to add a sentiment. And I almost forgot to add my little bats over on that are still over sitting on the Alta new mat. I'm coming in with a gel pen and just adding a few little highlights in different areas. I'm fairly new to doing this. And you can see here I hesitate a lot and it makes me nervous. And that's just because I'm truthfully not completely sure where I should be adding highlights and I don't want to mess anything up. When you put this much effort into a card, you really do have those moments of like, oh, now I'm scared to do the next thing because I don't want to screw up what I've already done. So I actually think it turned out great and gave a little bit of definition to that Thing, whatever that thing is in the background behind the skeleton and then I wanted to pop this entire panel up and I have this scotch foam tape that I've had in my office for or my craft room for a million years and I'm trying to just use up the rest of it because it's not something I want to purchase anymore but I've got a bunch of it left here that I've just been trying to kind of use up and get rid of um, they changed the formula of the scotch foam tape and it's just not the same as it used to be. So I am going to try some different stuff. I've heard that Honey Bee Stamps has some really good foam tape, so maybe I'll try that. 
Stampin' Up! has foam strips, which are great for shaker cards, but I wouldn't use them for something like this. So, um, I just think this card is coming together great. And then I'm going to add my little bats and I'm going to add my sentiment and this card will be finished. So let's jump into story time, shall we? First of all, let's talk about the fact that I have had like a million videos up this week. <laughs> For me, it's a lot. It might be the most number of videos I've had in a week in a decade. I have no idea. It's a lot. And I have really, really enjoyed it. How am I capable of doing this all of a sudden? You might ask. Well, <clears throat> this is what's changed in my Stampin' Up! business. And this is where I'm just going to have a little chit chat with you about some of that. I have quit doing events. So I used to do all kinds of events. Some of you have participated in them for years and years and years. And I did classes, I did stamp clubs, I did retreat events, um, I did a paper party retreat, which some people are still grieving the loss of. <laughs> and sorry about my head being in the camera there. And I'm gonna tell you right now, doing events takes an enormous amount of time. Um, so to every demonstrator, card maker out there that does events, I want to just take a moment to say how amazing and awesome you are. I did them for over a decade. And I have to tell you, um, I am at a place right now in my life, in my personal life, with having a teenage daughter who's involved in a lot of things where I don't want that stress added to me of trying to get an event together and get it out the door for people. So for me, it was always shipping it, right? So I would have to, there's so much that goes into it. You have to plan it. You have to prep for it. You have to really think about the cards you're creating because you can't create cards like the one I'm creating for you right now for an event. You just can't because first and foremost, there's too many parts and pieces. Secondly, you're gonna be cutting kits for people. There's no way you could cut these kits for people. Third, it's more of advanced techniques. So what happens then is you have people that feel like they wouldn't be capable of creating it. So basically when you're doing events, particularly for Stampin' Up!, you always try to keep everything very, very simple. By the way, let's talk about the Crystal Katana here. In a prior video, I said, I'll link to it, and I didn't do that. So I will link to the Crystal Katana in this video, and I am gonna go back and try to provide the link to it for other people. So um, this is my favorite picking up tool. It works fantastic. I have zero complaints. And one of my amazing YouTube viewers here told me, all you have to do if it quits getting sticky is just rinse the tip off. So, um, and then it's sticky again. So anyway, back to the events thing. It's just a ton of work and I, I know how much work it is because I've done it. And so I just wanna give my hats off to all of those demonstrators out there that are doing those. I have team members that are doing them. So if you are somebody who is interested in participating in events where you get the card kits in the mail and all of that kind of stuff, hit me up, let me know, because I have a couple of team members that are working really hard at growing their business and they would love to have you as a customer. So, you know, if you want to purchase an event from them, I'm telling you they'll love it. And there's our finished card, wasn't that cute? So these are some little um, goodies that Stampin' Up! put out these little boxes and I decided I wanted to make one for you so you could see what it was like. So I'm taking my Starry Sky ink, ink blending it, we're gonna stamp it and then it'll be finished. So anyway, um, back to story time. Yeah, that's what's going on with me is I'm just not doing events. So that opens up a whole bunch of time for me to be able to create things I wanna create and make videos for you. How fun is that? So, you know, it's a trade-off. You lose one thing, you gain something else. And people who run full-time Stampin' Up! businesses, 
and run events just don't have the time to create a bunch of videos and content. Um, so many of you have asked if I'm, if I've left Stampin' Up, am I leaving Stampin' Up? Am I stepping away from Stampin' Up? You name it. And we've talked about this in multiple videos. At this time, I'm just not doing events and I'm just enjoying being creative with the products that I really love and want to be creative with. That is it. There is no bigger mystery. And it's hysterical to me. Everybody really wants to make it a bigger deal than it is. It's not a big deal. Truth, truthfully, honestly. What I will say to you is if you have ever considered being a Stampin' Up person and you are like, I just don't want the pressure or I want to be able to use other products or whatever, you can do those things. And yeah. Now, that all that being said, has it negatively affected my Stampin' Up sales and income? Absolutely it has. I'm not doing events. So I'm not selling a bunch of product during events. And um, the number of people that just place orders with me online just to order has never been huge. I've never had a huge amount of people that order from me online, believe it or not. it's They've always purchased my events and that's where my bulk of my sales have come from. So um, is it helpful to me if you place online orders with me? Absolutely stinking lootly it is, very much so. It's also helpful to me if you purchase Misty stuff using my link, my, my Sweet Petunia, because I am an affiliate with them. Yes, I'm allowed to be. We've gone over that before. Um, and yeah, so there you go. That's what's going on. Maybe when my daughter graduates high school, I will have the freedom to do, or the time, um, or maybe when she starts driving, I'll be able to do events again. It's not something totally off my list. I'm just taking a hiatus, basically. Um, but in the meantime, you get lots of extra videos from me when life is going grand and I don't have a bunch of interruptions. So here with this little thing, I just needed to add a little sentiment. So I chose the boo to you and we're gonna punch that out and add it. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's everything going on in life. At the time that you're watching this video, we will have already celebrated my daughter's 15th birthday. Uh, she turns 15 on September 1st, but I don't have any story time about it yet because it hasn't happened yet at the time that I'm voiceovering this. I am also in the process of baking like a crazy person for uh, one of my best friend's daughter's wedding reception. They asked me to do the desserts. So I'm making Hello Dolly cookies, chocolate chip cookies, mini banana muffin, or mini banana breads, mini banana breads. <laughs> um, banana pudding in individual little containers with homemade whipped cream. And what else? I, oh, I'm gonna make a pound cake that's from a mold. So it's really beautiful, it looks like a rose. So I have a lot of baking. And then I also realized, oh God, well, I also have to bake my daughter's birthday cake. So I did that too. Um, yeah, so that's what's been going on around these parts. I'd love to hear what's happening in your life. What do you got going on? This is one of my favorite things about our chat section down below. And I'll talk with you guys in the next video. I hope you're having an awesome day. Shop with me at shoploveandstampin.com. Links below the video to see all the supplies over on my blog. I'll talk to you later. Bye.